Hello YouTubers, this is Hassan Habib. Today I want to talk to you about modern microservices. Uh, this is a new web series that uh, I have started, I've decided to, to start and to talk about based on my previous experiences building uh, enterprise level, enterprise scale uh, uh, services to serve specific business needs. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to, to, to work with, with a group of engineers that that allowed me to to comprehend and uh, in action and with practice understand why we need microservices what are the problems with microservices what are the advantage of microservices compared to other architectural patterns um, so I did some research and I started to you know compare other experiences that other people had building microservices and uh, I, I, I decided to start up this web series, I call it Modern Microservices, because with any idea out there, any architectural pattern, you'll see uh, different ways how people would implement different things. Like the Agile methodology, for instance, people came up with all different uh, schools of thought when they're uh, implementing an Agile as a framework. And I also like to think of microservices as an architectural pattern it's it's more of a framework to guide the process of building hopefully better software replaceable configurable uh, pluggable all the good stuff that people would want to have when they're uh, building an enterprise level uh, software so in this video this first video I want to talk about I've, I've seen a lot of videos where you start talking about what are microservices and then why microservices I want to start with with why microservices because I want to build this motive about why it is important you know why this microservice thing is important for us to to understand and comprehend in order for us to, to achieve specific goals not just technological goals not just uh, career goals but also business uh, business goals that allows us you know to 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 have better uh, achievements in general in the life and 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 to have our goals aligned with with the enterprise or the company or the startup wherever we we are building software so starting with that let's talk about why microservices I have three important parts in here and then with every with every portion here with every part uh, I have a little bit of a you know a subsection there to to say why what's what's the most important part uh, about every advantage that we may have uh, building Microsoft. So I was gonna start with better engineering. Um, uh, engineering in general, you know, is is the process of engineering software. This process can be very hard and it can be simple. When it's simple and easy it becomes more attractive to people who are involved in this process to make it better and to make it even easier. The more complex the engineering process becomes the more it gets harder to even think about improving it without thinking about demolishing the whole thing and starting from scratch. The good thing about microservices is that it, it, it relies heavily on the concept of componentization. Componentization meaning that you know try to break things into smaller pieces. So when you try to when you try to improve your engineering process, you don't have to kill everything and you don't have to change everything. You don't have to work months and months and months in trying to improve a big monolith you know that it'll take a lot of time for you to improve rather you could pick up just one small component that has its own pipeline from a development uh, and deployment and integration uh, perspective and see how things go with that so it allows a better experimentation you know when you break down your software into smaller pieces like that uh, you start thinking oh I can understand this component it's so small it's so easy to understand end to end therefore uh, maybe I can introduce this new concept that may or may not improve my uh, my engineering process and if it doesn't really improve it's not that hard I don't lose that much money or time I don't lose that much effort either into improving my engineering process 
So microservices gives you this componentization. This is a golden, a golden word, word a golden concept that allows us to uh, 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 replace and try different things. When the process becomes more complex, uh, engineers tend to be less uh, motivated to try to improve it. It becomes just the thing, the, the, the hard thing that they have to do every day and even thinking about improving it requires a lot of permissions and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people have to agree on it. But if it's smaller and simpler, things become a lot easier. Better engineers. How do microservices affect the engineers that are involved in the process? I'm putting a, a little point there. I'm saying storytellers factory. What does that mean? People who get involved in microservices, they get to experiment with different technologies on an enterprise level. So when they, when they experiment with these things, they become storytellers. Here's the thing. You can tell people as an engineer, you can tell people all day long about things you've read in a book. I could read or listen to lectures for uh, people like uh, Robert C. Martin or, or, or Fowler or Stallman, whoever is out there. I could, I could read their stories and tell it back to other people, but it's not as, as effective as your personal experience and your personal, personal experience with the software. What microservices allows you to do is that it allows you to go and try different technologies, the most modern thing, even if it's still in beta, and not have to worry about taking down the entire system. It allows you to say, okay, there is uh, Azure Cosmos DB. This is the cool thing that all the cool kids are using these days. Let me go try to integrate that with one small microservices that doesn't have so much traffic, and let me route some of the traffic to this instance, so you're not even taking the entire, you know, microservice down. You're just creating just a small instance that gets a little bit, maybe one or two percent of the traffic. So you could experiment with that te technology, and then you get to open the valve a little bit and see, you know, with more traffic coming in, how that technology uh, does. And when you try with different technologies, you become a storyteller. You didn't just become someone who. Uh, can repeat something that I could read in a book rather you could say no I tried with this different technology and here are the results here are the uh, 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 the results of experiment experimenting with that and what that means it may, it means a huge career growth it means that you are growing on daily basis in a way that will allow you to make better decisions in the future with what technologies you need to use to implement a certain feature. You say when you see when people graduate out of college, for instance, they learn about SQL Server, right? But they're not as much involved in uh, NoSQL or or something like Glacier or or something you know like data warehouses or data lakes. It's not something exactly that people come out of college and try with, right? But but if you get to experiment with that, that means that in the future, as an engineer, you have enough stories. You're a story, storyteller. You have enough stories and enough experience to say, okay, for this particular feature, this seems like a specific uh, kind of data processing and ingestion that we need to do. Therefore, what I could do here, probably this technology will be the best technology to use for this particular purpose. You become a technology agnostic and you don't have to bend the technology over, you know, the, you don't have to bend the technology backwards to, uh, to get it to fulfill a specific business need just because you know about this technology and not any others. So from a career perspective, from an engineer perspective, you become this kind of engineer that, that has all these stories and all these experiences in a very short amount of time that makes you able to make better decisions about technologies and patterns because within within the microservices architecture itself you could you could try different software design patterns which is which is great about that right and then better business you know and I'm putting down their market doctors I, I, I call it market doctors because you get to get the pulse of of the market 
you know, very, very fast with microservices. When you try to develop a new feature and developing a new feature takes a lot shorter than it does in a more complex monolith, monolithic system, you get, to, you get to experiment with the system. You get to push smaller features out there as fast as possible, as easy as possible, and you get to get the market pulse. And when you get the market pulse, that means you get to actually decide what better fits the market from a software feature perspective. In that way, you are, even still from a business perspective, you are wasting a lot less time on engineering. You don't have to wait months and months and months to develop new features. Uh, your engineers are so open-minded and, and, and so uh, they're, they're, they're big storytellers that can actually help you uh, uh, get your features out there with the best technology because they're storytellers, right? They've tried with different things and they know what works and what doesn't and that leverages everyone's uh, uh, knowledge, you know, to make better decisions, right? Based on actual experimentations, not just a YouTube video or a, or a, a, a book or, or something like that. They, they actually exper exper experimented with it themselves. Also, from a business perspective, you get to put these features out there, like I said, as fast as possible, you get to direct traffic and try different things. This, these three things, these three pillars is what makes microservices as an architectural pattern a lot more attractive than existing systems like a monolith application or such. In the next video, I'm going to start talking about what are microservices. You know, if they're that attractive, if they can guarantee engineering growth and engineers growth and business growth, what are they? How do we, how do we know a service is, is, is a microservice? What, what does this term mean? And how can I draw the line and say, okay, this service have exceeded the limit of it being a microservice and now we need to break it into multiple services and a lot more stories about what I learned building microservices are to come. Thank you for watching.